Hello everyone, this is Rob coming to you from the Mishimoto Engineering Facility. Today, we're going to be installing the secondary radiator in your 2011 plus 6.7 liter power stroke diesel. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube page for more exclusive content. Because this installation is so labor intensive and we're already working our way down to the primary radiator, now would be a great time to upgrade to the Mishimoto primary. Let's get started. Tools recommended for installation include 8 and 10 millimeter sockets, quarter inch drive ratchet, 8 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a pry bar, flathead screwdriver, panel tool, channel lock pliers, and Mishimoto's liquid chill. Installation time is three to four hours. Installation difficulty is a four out of five. The secondary radiator is quite heavy. We recommend having a friend on hand to help with removal and installation. Remove the four bolts that secure the grill to the radiator support. Pull the top of the grill forward and reach behind it with a pry bar or panel tool to release the clips that secure the grill. Then remove the grill. Remove the four bolts that secure the headlight. There is one bolt up top, two on the inside edge, and one along the bottom edge. Unseat the headlight assembly by pulling it away from the truck. Disconnect the electrical harness from the headlight or remove the bulb sockets from the headlight by twisting them. Do this on both sides. Disconnect the hood release cable. To do this, release the two tabs that hold together the clamshell and slide the cable upward to separate it. Then release the integrated tree clip that secures the cable to the radiator support. Remove the six bolts that secure the radiator support and plastic brace to the vehicle. Remove the two screws that secure the bottom of the plastic brace, just behind the front bumper. There is one on each side of the brace. Release the tree clip that secures the bottom of the rubber shroud. Do this on both sides. Remove the bolt that secures the hood switch to the radiator support and move the sensor out of the way. Remove the two bolts that secure the radiator mount saddle to the back of the radiator support, and then remove the saddle. Do this on both sides. Disconnect the electrical harness from the horn assembly. Pull on the tabs at the upper corners of the plastic brace to release it from the vehicle. Release the lower hose from the plastic brace where it runs along the front bumper. Then remove the brace. Remove the two bolts that secure the transmission cooler to the radiator support. Allow the cooler to droop over the crossover pipe. Release the radiator support by pushing upward at the corners. This may require quite a bit of force. Then remove the radiator support from the vehicle. Release the tree clips that secure the rubber shrouds to the secondary radiator. Then remove the rubber shroud on the driver's side. Place a bucket under the passenger side of the secondary radiator. Loosen the petcock on the radiator to drain the coolant. Install a piece of hose over the drain to reduce spillage. Remove the two bolts that secure the AC condenser to the secondary radiator. There's one bolt on each side. Once the coolant has finished draining, loosen the worm gear clamp on the crossover pipe where it connects to the secondary radiator on the driver's side and pull the hose off the radiator. Lift the hose up to allow residual coolant to drain from the crossover pipe. Release the two clips from the quick disconnect fittings on the crossover pipe. Disconnect the upper hose from the crossover pipe by pushing it back. Then release the fitting from the thermostat housing by pulling upward. There may be residual coolant inside the system, so keep your bucket handy to capture any spills. Swing the crossover pipe and attached transmission cooler over to the passenger side and allow it to rest on the bumper. Use the rubber shroud or a piece of cardboard to protect the bumper. Release the tree clip that secures the transmission fluid line to the condenser. Lift the AC condenser directly upward to unseat it from the secondary radiator. Place a piece of cardboard over the front bumper and rest the condenser on the cardboard. Compress the clamp that secures the coolant hose to the thermostat housing on the passenger side of the secondary radiator and pull the hose off of the thermostat housing. Compress the clamp that secures the coolant hose to the back of the passenger side thermostat housing and remove the hose from the housing. Compress the clamp that secures the coolant hose to the driver side thermostat housing and remove the hose from the housing. Compress the clamp that secures the overflow hose to the secondary radiator and disconnect the hose. Remove the four bolts that secure the secondary radiator to the primary radiator. 
Remove the secondary radiator. Move the rubber shroud on the passenger side so it's clear of the thermostat housing. Close the petcock and lift the radiator upward to remove it from the vehicle. Take care to avoid damaging the thermostat housing and AC condenser line on the passenger side as there is very little room. This radiator will still have quite a bit of coolant inside. Get a friend to help you with removal and have a bucket ready to drain the remainder of the coolant. Remove the clip nuts from the stock secondary radiator and transfer them to the Mishimoto radiator. Snug the drain plug on the Mishimoto radiator. It is recommended that you install new thermostats and gaskets when replacing the secondary radiator. If you decide to reuse your old thermostats, remove all four bolts that secure the covers to the thermostat housings. Remove the covers by gently prying them off, and then remove the thermostats from the housings. The thermostats are different, so take care to note the location of each for reinstallation. Lubricate the O-rings on the thermostat caps with fresh coolant to aid with reinstallation. Install the appropriate thermostats and lids. Pay special attention when installing the lids to ensure that the holes in the caps align with the holes in the thermostat housings. Secure the caps with the four provided bolts. Lubricate the O-rings on the thermostat housings and bolt them into the secondary radiator using the provided bolts. These prototype thermostat housings had CNC machined screw-in ports, but yours will be full cast aluminum housings. Install the Mishimoto radiator. Lower the radiator into place and secure it with the provided hardware. Reinstall the passenger side rubber shroud. Make sure that the water outlet on the thermostat and AC condenser mount come through the hole in the shroud. Then secure the bottom of the shroud with the two pop clips. Lift the AC condenser upwards and set the tab on the condenser into the mounts on the secondary radiator. Then secure the AC condenser with the provided bolts. Install the overflow hose to the secondary radiator. Secure the overflow hose with the original spring clamp. Install the coolant hose that runs to the back of the passenger side thermostat and secure it with the spring clamp. Install the coolant hose that runs to the front of the passenger side thermostat and secure it with the spring clamp. Install the crossover pipe and attach transmission cooler. Install the coupler on the passenger side by pushing it down over the thermostat until you hear the locking clip engage. Then slip the hose over the connection on the driver's side and secure the hose with the worm gear clamp. Install the upper coolant hose to the crossover pipe by pushing it over the quick disconnect fitting until you hear the locking clip engage. Then tuck the passenger side rubber shroud back into place. Install the coolant hose over the driver side thermostat inlet and secure it with the spring clamp. Install the radiator support. Line up the bushings on the primary radiator with the saddles on the radiator support. Push the radiator support towards the radiator until the pin on the bottom of the radiator support drops into the sheet metal of the vehicle. Do this on both sides. Then check to make sure everything is seated properly. Secure the radiator support with the original hardware. Secure the driver's side rubber shroud to the primary radiator using the original hardware. Install the plastic brace by aligning the dowels on each side with the holes in the body and then pushing the brace in until it clicks. Secure the brace with the original hardware. Reattach the coolant hose to the brace by pushing it into the groove on the brace. Install the two screws that secure the plastic brace to the vehicle located just behind the front bumper. Move the transmission cooler back into position and secure it with the original hardware. Reattach the hood release cable and close the clamshell to secure it. Attach the cable to the radiator support with the integrated tree clip. Attach the lower rubber shroud with the original tree clips. Install the radiator mount saddles to the back of the radiator support and secure them with the original hardware. Install the hood switch to the radiator support and secure it with the original hardware. Fill the cooling system with pre-mixed Ford approved coolant through the filler neck. Start the engine and allow it to idle with the cap off. Turn the heater control valve on the vehicle's HVAC unit to full hot and put the fan on low. Monitor the engine temperature and coolant level in the reservoir. Add coolant as needed to maintain proper level in the reservoir and check your connections for leaks. 
If the vehicle begins to overheat or coolant starts to overflow from the reservoir, shut the engine off and allow it to cool before continuing. Once the vehicle is fully warmed up and the coolant level has stabilized, allow the vehicle to cool off completely and then top off the coolant. Check the coolant level once more after putting in some miles. Reconnect the wiring harness to the horn assembly. Reconnect the wiring harness to the headlight bulbs. Install the headlight by slipping the alignment pins into the body of the vehicle and secure it with the original hardware. Do this on both sides. Reinstall the grill. Slip the tabs on the bottom of the grill into the clips on the plastic brace. Then secure the top of the grill with the original hardware. Now that this installation is complete, you're going to want to go back and double check all your connections to make sure there's no leaks and top off your coolant. Also, don't forget to click subscribe.